close your eyes and make up your mind you're going to stay with the breath. Notice when you breathe in, where do you feel the breath? When you breathe out, where do you feel it? To stay with those sensations and allow them to be comfortable. Don't tighten up around them or tense up around them. And allow the breath to find a rhythm that feels good for the body. Sometimes the body needs to be relaxed, sometimes it needs to be energized. Get a sense of what the body needs right now and then provide it with a breath. And as for any other thoughts that come into the mind, you have to say, nope, 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 we're going to stay right here with the breath. It's only when you have that kind of determination that the meditation makes a difference. Otherwise, it just becomes one more place you visit in the course of the day. Like old hunters used to have trap lines. They would visit this trap and then that trap, and you visit the things you like, the things you don't like, you visit the breath, back to the things you like, things you don't like. Nothing much gets accomplished that way. You have to have a foundation in life, and you have to have a sense of purpose, a sense of direction. So right now your direction is you need to train the mind, because you need qualities of mindfulness, alertness, discernment in order to get through life and not suffer. So you've got to develop these qualities, and that's what we do as we meditate. Underlying it all, though, is your realization that if you don't make this happen, it's not going to happen. They talk about two kinds of truths. Truths of the observer, things that you can just watch and they happen on their own. And then there's a the truth of the will. You may have to make it happen, like if you want to be a good musician. You're just not going to sit there and just let the music, you know, musical instrument lie there in your room. And it's not going, you're not going to get good just by watching it. You've got to make up your mind that this is what you want to do. And it's the same with your life. Your life has to take a direction. Otherwise it just bounces around, depending on bouncing away from things you like, don't like and toward things you do like, but then they don't turn out to be so good, so they bounce off those again. It's like those little particles you see dancing around in the, in the sunbeams. They don't really go anywhere in particular. They do go someplace, but it may not be in anywhere in particular that's anywhere good. If you want your life to go in a good direction, you have to make up your mind that's where you want to go. So the Buddha recommended there are four things that you have to keep in mind when you make any determination or you make a vow that this is what you want to do. The first thing is you have to use your discernment as to what would be a good goal to set for yourself in life. And then you also have to look at the things you're doing. Are they actually leading toward the goal or are they leading away from it? Use your discernment to figure out what's the best way to get to that spot you want to go. And then the next quality is truthfulness. Once you've made up your mind, you stick with it. See what the results are. If it turns out the path that you've chosen is not a good path, well, you can change. But you have to be true to the path originally before you can decide whether it's good or bad. The third quality is relinquishment. You realize there are certain things you're going to have to give up you know, if you're going to find real happiness. There may be, it's not just bad things that you give up. Sometimes there are things that you like, but you realize that a greater happiness is more valuable than lots of little happinesses. The little happinesses just don't really add up to the kind of greater happiness it's possible for human beings to find. So you have to be willing to let go of those lesser forms of happiness. And finally, you need the quality of calm. You realize that you're on a path and it's going to take time, so you try not to get worked up and upset about the fact that it's such a long path. It's a good path to be on. You're not harming anybody. You're, the path involves virtue, it involves concentration, discernment, goodwill, compassion. All these are good things. So use them to keep the mind calm as you make your way toward your goal. That way your life, instead of just being a dust moat in a, in a sunbeam, becomes an arrow that's shot and hits the target. Gets where you want to go. You look back at your life and you see it had a direction. When you arrive at the goal, then you realize your life has had a purpose. But it's up to you to make that purpose, otherwise you just get bounced around. So make up your mind where you want to go in your life and what kind of skills you're going to need. Regardless of the path you're going to choose, you're going to need the qualities of mindfulness, alertness, discernment. And working with the breath is a good way of developing those, keeping the breath in mind, being alert to whether you're staying with the breath or not, and then discerning what's working and what's not. Right there you're going to learn an awful lot of skills you're going to need in other areas of life. To think about what direction you want to go in, and then adjust your thoughts, words, and deeds so you go in that direction and don't head off on the other, on another path. <clears throat>